we did mention Derek Okora earlier. Yes. A big fan of Derek Okora. I, I did have a reading of him. Uh, oh, yes. I think six months before he passed. Oh. And it was the first time I got to meet him. And what a lovely gentleman. Oh, right. said. Um, and obviously, some people have their opinions or whatever. They but do. the reading he gave me was absolutely yeah. impeccable. The information he gave, it was so correct. Really? And, yeah. And like you said, I got a hug off him at the end. He was the nicest man. Because I think before I met him, I was nervous because obviously he's a celebrity. People know yeah. him. Yeah. You don't know how he, he was. He was meet heroes, but yeah. I got to meet him, and what a lovely man! But uh, for you, obviously, you was good friends with Derek Okora. Oh gosh, you yeah, yeah. Worked with him a lot, a lot of the time. Um, what was it about him, and what do you think his legacy is? Um, he's left um, with the paranormal world. And well, he, he, I mean, there's, the only thing I can say is, in my opinion, he, he's he. It was he is the the most famous medium in the world. And, and that's that's partly because of Most Haunted. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that, because that's where he shot. He made Most Haunted. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. Derek was the star of Most Haunted. Mm -hmm. He made Most Haunted. Uh, and that, that was, you know, in, in, incredible. There's no getting away from it. Um, but you, you've also got to remember that, that it was... a an entertainment show and we were controlled for want of a better word by living tv yeah as regards what happened that sort of stuff um but some of the i mean honest to god i mean and he was a showman as well he was an entertainer yeah. as well as a, a very good medium but the the big one for me was that after most haunted um we obviously worked together on this um, stage show that we did called psychic and science all right, okay. Um, must have, I don't know how many we did, 13, 18, something like that, yeah. 15 uh, shows around the country, three-hour yeah. show. Um, and, and Derek had his, usually, he had his 20 minutes at the beginning. Yeah. Where, he, you know, I'm getting your dad, I'm getting Fred, I'm, you know, what, what's wrong? Why don't you like David or do whatever it happens. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the Derek bit, the show, which was incredible. We, we started off together talking about, the the this this strange energy I think is the word between the two of us mm. uh, that when we worked together on things on most haunted which unfortunately we didn't work together that much on it we were sort of right. slightly kept apart a bit for some reason but when we did do some, something together amazing things happened and one of the best ones ever was Kinetic Castle in mm. Ireland and that was just beyond belief um, and um, so we had this sort of we talked about then then Derek had his 20 minutes now my view on on the subject is that as, as some people oh, a lot of people oh he's a fake he's a, he's this and a fake media oh there's no such thing as mediums no such thing as ghosts no all of that fine okay everyone's entitled to, yeah. to their opinions um but my take on it was and I was always nervous while Derek was doing it in case he didn't get some of it right Mm -hmm. um so i actually usually went away uh off the stage and and sort of went and went back sat in the changing room out the way yeah. for a bit uh but the fascinating thing for me was that after his 20 minutes which of course we've got a show you know it's got to be finished in three hours yeah. and all that sort of thing um you couldn't get him off the stage uh we sometimes needed a cattle prod <laughs> to try and to try and or or a um, a, a, a hook to put to follow, yeah, because he was he was a case of rich. Hang on a minute, like, rich. No, can I, I need to just I need to go to this lady over here? Yeah. Uh, well, hang on a minute, there. You, you had 20 minutes now, you know, and you know, which I think was right. If you're a fake, you're right, 20 minutes is up, whew, got through yeah. another one, and I'm off. Yeah, mm -hmm. no way. He was on for us, you know, he, he, he wanted more. Yeah, because he was so good, and yeah. and you know, and I I saw a very different Derek Akora on the stage shows that we did to what we saw on on the on on the most haunted program. Yeah. Um, because as I say to you, it's an entertainment show. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, and it entertained, and by God, did Derek entertain? God bless yeah. him. Oh. Right. Yeah. I miss him terribly. It's awful, but uh, there we go. Yeah. Um, what What was it? What was he like off stage? You know, from the away from the TV, and you know when he was in his like day to day life, away, like you say, away from most, away from TV. What was he? What was he like on that kind of day to day basis? Yeah, same bloke. You know, f bubbly, full yeah. of 
full of life, full of life. Um, just a great, he was, no, get away, he was such a nice guy. And, and there's another, I'll tell you something else, yeah. Um, he was always, always, it didn't matter where he was. I mean, for instance, um, we were in um, Dublin Airport. Yeah. Um, and um, as usual, you can imagine, I, I remember, I'm not going to mention any names, but a particular member of the crew, people, <coughs> people came up to them. Yeah. And they were a little, little bit dismissive, mm -hmm. a bit. Not, not, you know, not bad. Not, but, but, Derek was right. Uh, you know, yes. Come on, do you want a, do you want a picture? You want, yeah, yeah. Hey, Rich, Rich, could you come over here? And, and this lady, blah, blah blah. And he was, you know, and he, he always had time mm -hmm. for, for for people, for, time yeah. for his fans, because yeah. without fans or without the public, you know, you're nothing. Yeah, and he knew that, and he was such a people person. Mm -hmm. Um, and always, 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 no matter what time or anything else, he'd always got time for people, yeah. which I think was was you know, and that and and again, yeah, just a great guy. Loved his pop, absolutely <laughs> loved his red one. That you know, we <laughs> used to spend a long lot of time um, after the shows. Um, you know, sort of get well. Not, I don't mean because um, obviously. Uh, when we were doing TV shows, that was different because obviously we often, yeah. often didn't finish till. I mean, originally we used to do literally twenty-four hours. Wow. Um, you know, we, we'd start at nine in the morning and we'd probably finish at nine or ten o'clock the next morning, uh, and then do an interview. So you know, but when we were doing our shows and anything like that, when we were doing stuff, you know, we'd spend you know long hours in the bar of the hotel yeah. afterwards asking, <laughs> begging them to <laughs> begging them to stay keep the bar open a bit longer and yeah, yeah no, great guy great guy yeah, definitely uh great. sadly missed and and i don't think i really genuinely don't think that we'll find his equal mm -hmm. I, I don't think so i'm sure of it so when you started doing uh this show with Derek and mm. obviously the 80 shows. How did it come about? How, uh, what was it just a, an idea one day or was it something you planned for quite some no, time? I, well, it's interesting stuff because basically it was not, it was Denise and Richard Mott, uh, mm. Compass Paranormal. Don't know whether you remember oh, them. No, I'm not they, sure. they were big and I, yeah. I did quite a lot of stuff for, for Denise, worked with Denise a lot and they came up with the idea, um, of creating this show called Psychic and Science. Mm -hmm. And and wow, asked me if I'd uh, be prepared to do the, <laughs> the science part. Well, you know, the, the, yeah. the, the and obviously, the, and they actually um, got in touch with Chris Conway. Mm -hmm. And Chris and I did Psychic and Science yeah. um, for quite a while around the country we had you know we're right up to scotland and down to cornwall and, and we did did a, an amazing dudley castle one yeah um and then for some reason i've no idea why but chris decided to leave mm -hmm. which is a shame because I, I i love chris he's a great guy and, and i i miss him I really do uh and he was good he was very good on it he really was and uh, he went and then they said well richard would you have a word with derek yeah and see if I don't know whether we'll be able to afford him, <laughs> but, but would you have a word with Derek? And so I, I had a word, and he sound, said he was interested, and we arranged a meeting uh, with them and him, and 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 he then came on board. Wow. And then so we we started. In fact, we did the the Dudley, the Dudley Castle yeah. one uh, with Derek, and and that went to treat. That was absolutely tickety boo. And then poor old Denise and and and. Um, Richard, they, they had serious problems. They because unfortunately they sold their company, which was a very big, very good a paranormal company. Really were good. Compass. A lot of people remember Compass. Mm -hmm. And they got duped big time by the guy that bought it. I think he only ever paid them two hundred quid or something stupid wow. uh for it. And they wanted uh, they, they lost a phenomenal amount of money. And and it sort of all went pear shaped because of it, which was such a shame. Yeah. And Derek and I decided that we'd take it on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so we formed a company, you yeah. know, uh, Psychic and Science Limited with uh, my wife, Julia, uh, Gwen Acora, uh, Derek Acora, and Richard Felix. So we had our, you know, our own company and we set it up and then we just carried on uh, doing it like that. Wow. Um, and it went to treat. It really did go a treat. It was, it was, 
it was great. It was, you know, and just an honour and privilege to work with Derek. Yeah. The two of us together on the stage, you know, wow, it was, uh, it was beyond belief. Yeah. It really was. Oh, that's amazing. Because he was the star, mate. He's the star, mate. Tell you that. <laughs> He's the superstar. He was. Yeah, it was great. Um, oh. And I'll take that with me to the grave. You know, we had a, yes. we had a ball. We did. Oh, lovely. So with, I did do some research. Obviously, where you're living now, it is, obviously, it says about it being haunted. Was it on a medieval mortared site. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. Where you are. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, of course. It, well, the, I've been here for 30, 36 years. Um, and it's, it's, on the, it, it's on the site of a medieval mortared site that goes back to the 12th century. Okay, 1100 well. and something. Um, and the, the, it's a farmhouse, this is. But um, the original farmhouse also goes back to the same time, about, about 1100 and something. Um, and when we say haunted, it's, it's interesting because, you know, if it was really haunted, <laughs> I don't think I could live here. You know, <laughs> if I saw, oh dear. You know, but, but again, be very, but basically things happen that we can't explain. Yeah. And it's always always on the top floor it's a three story and and right. um the original stairs that go to the top um are the original staircase from 16 1690 when this was built um and upstairs th th there's a doorway that's blocked off now that, that actually the farm workers would sleep at, in in the attics yeah there's three rooms up there um and so it wasn't just it wasn't just the attic it was they were used for there'd probably be straw on the floor on the original floors and what have you and they'd they'd sleep up there for i don't know harvest time or whatever and it's always always to me been suspect yeah. i think's the word um there's one room which is the original it's got beams in it that go back a thousand years uh in the beam that came from the hall which is literally yeah. the, the site next door um and for god for years you'd go upstairs and you'd walk in and the bloody light was on yeah. Oh, uh, every time you go, you know you switched it off. And the light in the room, we call it the tank room because there's a water tank up there. As well. Always called the tank room. And, you know, and I go in there and I remember I, <laughs> I don't sense anything much. I don't like it in there. I yeah. do not like it in there. <laughs> um, and I always expect I'm going to see something and I never have. I'll go up there alone. Of course, it's my house, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and you get used to anything, if you know what I mean. But the light will be on, on, and it still happens. Still happens now. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's the end of that. But also up there, because obviously it's all it's it's modernised. The other room, the other two rooms up there are modern. There's a bedroom yeah. and a and a big sort of like a like a sitting room type thing up there as well. And my my eldest son Ed came back from university and he decided that he'd he'd have a his own suite up there. You know, his yeah. rooms at the top. So he was sleeping up there. And one night, um, according to Ed, who doesn't doesn't believe in ghosts, mm -hmm. although he'd been doing ghost walks for me for twelve years. Yeah. And compare, compared the uh, Psychic and Science show with right. me and Derek, yeah. um, um, fled down at the age of 22 to our bedroom because something had pulled the bedclothes off him during the night. Wow. Never went up again. Never, ever went up again. Yeah. My other son, Wills, later, who he was seven, seven years, seven years younger than Ed, uh, decided he'd have a go up there. And he left as well because something happened similar. Yeah. Uh, he felt some. He felt something uh, sit down on the bed, and he left. And he never, never came back. Never went back in there again. No, I never. Went, he went up there again, but he never slept there again. Yeah. It's never been used again. So there's something. There's some. Oh, and the other one, we had a billiard table up there, a snooker table, mm -hmm. and Ed would say over and over again that he'd go back up and someone had finished the game. Wow. Um. I don't know, but you know, we're we're not. The sort of family, as you can imagine, with what I'm doing, that mm -hmm. that would in any way make up ghost stories about the place. You know, yeah, absolutely course, yeah. no point at all. My wife doesn't believe in any of it. There's no such thing as ghosts. Once you're dead, you're dead, and that's the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so there's something, but very little. You get occasional um, things, not a lot. I mean, here, you know, a few weeks yeah. ago, uh, up there, I don't know if you can see it, there's a... Can you see there's a teddy bear up there? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, I was sat here doing one of my podcasts. Yeah. And that look, I mean, it's been there for years. And it just launched itself onto the floor on camera. 
Really? Well, wow. Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone was shocked. I was surprised. <laughs> shocked is the word. I mean, it, it just sits there, and all of a sudden, down it came. Yeah. And it's been there for years. So I, I don't know. I do not know. Did I? Did I? You know, it's a, it's a stone floor underneath the wood here. There's there's no earthly reason for it at all. <clears throat> yeah. And and yet the silly part about it is that my the study that I'm in now wasn't part of the house. This was part of the stables right. that we converted. I don't know, 25 years ago. Yeah. So as you know, I can't I can't see why <laughs> why the stables will be haunted. But I don't know. You know, I just don't know. Yeah. Um, energy again, but you know, and, and and only the other night again doing another podcast, there was the strangest bump in here that people heard. Yeah. On uh, I said, Oh my god, it's just getting more like most haunted every day, isn't it? <laughs> um, so I don't know, but yes, but nothing, uh, nothing downstairs, yeah, apart from what, where I'm now. I don't, I think there's, there's an explanation. Look, guys, tick the normal boxes first, definitely every time, but I yeah. have done. And I can't explain, but yeah, there's something, there's something going on on the top floor. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, but who knows? Who knows? You know, when you think how much has gone on here, in in in, in getting on for a thousand years, Jesus. Yeah, I suppose there's bound to be something. But you know, I I, I don't think I could cope with it if it was, um, I mean, really haunted. Yeah. But perhaps I would. Perhaps I'd just get used to it. Maybe. Yeah. I think sometimes, like you say, it's that first it's the anticipation of something happening i think yeah and then you're right you're in fear yeah right like, like i mentioned earlier about if i see if i ever saw spirit i probably would run but i yeah. think you probably get used to it after a certain yeah. amount of time you're like oh it's just so so somebody whichever yeah yeah think, exactly yeah exactly talk, mind, i say it. to people talk to them yeah talk to them because they were they were once you and me some of them still think they are yeah, definitely. But just chat, talk to them, you know, and show them that respect. But uh, be interesting. But I, I say, I mean, I mean, you see, obviously, I've seen a ghost in Derby Jail at twenty yeah. past three on a Friday afternoon, and I, I do still have problems. I do have problems being in there on my own, but mm. I have to. Yeah, because it's my building, you know, it's my premise, yeah. and, and I have to, I have to be there alone mm -hmm. at silly o'clock, like two o'clock in the morning when everyone's just left the building when we've done a night vigil and I have to just finish off. But I mean, I'll be honest with you, I normally I normally try and leave <laughs> with the last person. You know, yeah. if there's some washing up to do, like, for instance, like, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow morning yeah. or I'll get somebody else to do it. And I'll, I'll come out with you guys if that's all right. Yeah. yeah. I think that's definitely a, a place on my list to be able to investigate is an old jail. Um, it's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. It really is. It's it, no nobody in twenty one years of having it. Nobody's ever left disappointed. Yeah, wow. Which is what it's all about. It's not very big, but it doesn't have to be. You know, I, I sort of like liking it. You know, I say, well, you know, you do Shrewsbury Jail, you do Gloucester Jail. They're great, absolutely. But you know, how many prison cells can you go in? Yeah. You know, how many of them are really haunted? You know, you've been in one cell, another cell, another cell, another cell. Yeah, okay, the condemned cell, the room yeah. where they execute, that's fine. But other than that, you know, you, the fact that it's big doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily make it any more haunted. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Um, I, I, another question I do have. Um, what advice would you ha would you give to people who are trying to start in the paranormal world, maybe starting up something new? Uh, new show or anything what what sort of advice would you give to them go oh, well uh, the first bit of advice i'd give to anybody is that in my opinion the only ghost detector is you mm. <laughs> and your dog yeah <laughs> to be quite honest with you and all of your gadgets which are great mm -hmm. and they are great they're all all they are is an aid mm -hmm. to ghost hunting rather than <laughs> In, in in my opinion, you know, you know, for instance, you know, yeah, EMF meters, great, yeah, K two, I like K twos. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest yeah. with you, I do like K twos because obviously lights come on. Now the thing is that I believe if a, you know, the easiest way for a ghost to communicate, it's a lot easier for a ghost to make a few different coloured lights to come on on a machine, yeah, than it is to move a table, yeah, of course, yeah. or throw something across the room because yeah. the energy it needs for that. Is, is far greater than because it, it is a ghosts are energy yeah so that means ghosts can influence energy mm -hmm. that's why they influence tvs phones 
computers, light bulbs, you know, all that sort of stuff. There's no getting away from yeah. that. Um, <clears throat> so I do like them. And of course, if you're doing it for the public, then obviously the more <laughs> The more flashing lights you've got and, and all of those sort of things, then, then the better f for Joe Public to, to, to mm -hmm. see. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all down to you and your perception. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think the big one is have an open mind. And the big one I always say is tick the normal boxes first. Yeah. And people the building first. Spend time um, peopling the building and letting the building people you. Letting yeah. the b building or whatever's in it Get used to you, the yeah. intruder that's come into their building, their house, that they yeah. still think they live there. Uh, and listen for the sounds, the natural sounds that you're going to get during the night. You know, like the dog bark in the, the wind blowing something, rattling something, that the, the beams uh, cooling down if it's the central heating's been on or it's been yeah. a hot, warm day. Um, all of those things that, that, you know, you think, oh, what's that? You know, yeah, but listen to it. Spend a bit of time alone in a particular part of the building. Just keep it very quiet and listening, mm -hmm. and sen sensing it, yeah. sensing the building, getting used to it, and letting it get used to you. Yeah, because that's the other one. As I say, all these intruders coming in all the time. It's not so bad, not so bad in a in a, a commercial type building. When you're talking about a building that was a home, mm -hmm. then you've got to remember that that some of the spirits that are still there still think it's theirs yeah of course yeah and so again it's a bit of a bit down to showing respect exactly i was just about to say that yeah. it, does, it all comes down to respect it does it Definitely. does there's no getting away from it so that's the main thing and and you know don't you know <clears throat> don't because the temperature's dropped think that it's definitely a ghost mm -hmm. check the windows check the doors check the exactly. you know that that's what stuff. we think with us as well. We always try and debunk. If we can't debunk it, it's open to interpretation. But yes, we always yes. do try. If something flashes, like you know, one of the little cat balls, we'll walk past it, you know, see if there's anything, slam the door, to yeah. see what if it is. But, and then if we can't, yeah. obviously then... Yeah, exactly. Open. Make sure your phone's switched off. Yeah. Because, you know, you don't want a message. You want a message from Spirit World, not from your babysitter. <laughs> 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 which is a big one that happens a lot but you know um and just have an have an open mind and don't don't expect too much because mm -hmm. the the why should they jump through hoops because you ask them to or even worse tell them to mm -hmm. um so that's the big one you know show a bit of respect there uh and accept what happens you know i mean for instance you know oh the temperature's dropped oh my god it, you feel it here wow. so you get your old thermometer out your laser thermometer yeah. and all it does is record the temperature of the wall where it hits yeah yeah so oh but no so we need a the only way of doing that is to have a probe you know a thermometer with a probe yeah and you go to the area where the person says the temperature feel like a, and you dangle the probe there and it will record the, the the real temperature there and yeah my god it's dropped three degrees yeah but it doesn't prove there's a ghost there mm. it only proves that the temperature's dropped yeah it isn't a ghost detector mm -hmm. but it, it's an aid yeah definitely. to it and you know the more aids you've got the better you know i think mm -hmm. um but you know the the one to have of course in my opinion is a, is a heat seeking machine a heat seeking machine a thermal imager because yeah. you see i'm a huge believer that um ghosts need energy to do something they are energy but yeah. they need energy so you walk into the room and then someone says well it's you know the temperature will drop it's like a freezer and mm. then this then this figure appeared yeah yeah now it only appeared only appeared uh head and shoulders because perhaps there wasn't enough energy in the room enough heat heat is energy so it yeah. draws the heat from the room so the temperature drops, yeah, yeah, in the room, and but there's not enough energy for a full apparition. Mm -hmm. That's why you often only get head and shoulders. Yeah. Um, and then basically, so with a with a thermal imaging camera, you should, by rights, record a hot ghost. Yeah. Because it's drawn the energy to itself. So in other words, the ghost itself, the apparition, should should be glowing, should yeah. be warm. Uh, but they're very expensive. <laughs> that's the trouble. Yeah, with I'm one of them, yeah. <laughs> but that, that's that's the thing. You need the fire brigade along with a really good thermal imaging camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. Thank you. Um, 
obviously, I, I do follow your podcast. I listen to your, uh, to your podcast. I know you mentioned Stone Tape Theory because you mentioned yeah. battlefields. Yeah. Because I'm going on a tour in August to do uh, Waterloo and some of the World oh. War One, and I can't wait. It's quite, I've always wanted to do. My, uh, my granddad always wanted to do it, and I'm going with my stepdad. And I really can't wait. But um, is there any battlefields you've done and experience you've had regarding the stone tape theory and what you've seen? Yeah, uh, well, um, I've, I mean, I've done, I've done Waterloo, but not, not. Uh, I went with my dad. Um, yeah. God, a long, long time. Fantastic. You'll love it. It is incredible. I, yeah, I love it history. Is, myself. I really can't wait. Yeah, it is incredible. Um, I mean, I've done, I've, I've done Edge Hill, Naseby, Gettysburg. Oh, I, oh, I got. Uh, uh, experience on on uh, Gettysburg, yeah. uh, big time. Um, yeah, I got touched up <laughs> on the battlefield at, at Gettysburg. Um, oh. I, you see, again, I believe in being becoming a a trigger object where you can. And while I was there at Gettysburg, I uh, uh, borrowed a, a, a uniform, a, a blue uniform of the. Uh, um, it was a regiment called the Twentieth Maine that that uh, held this place called Little Round Top. Uh, when the Confederate soldiers were attacking them. Incredible. It's a fantastic bit in the film, uh, Gettysburg, all about it. And I've, I've always had this fascination for the place. And so I, I went up alone <laughs> onto the rocks at Little Round Top, where the battle was, had raged, literally raged. Yeah. <clears throat> Camera with me. <clears throat> and um, I'm just sat there, literally saying, you know, if, if there is a soldier, if there's anyone still here from the 20th Maine, I so respect what you guys did, how you managed to hold on here. And if there is anything anyone can do, if you could in any way, um, you know, give me a sign of someone yeah. there. And I got touched <laughs> very high up on my thigh. <laughs> Literally. I'm not kidding, mate. I mean, bloody, it freaked me out. I, I, I yelled like hell, dropped the camera yeah. and fell, fell off the rock and cut my leg open. Wow. I was wounded on uh, Gettysburg. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a gay union soldier. <laughs> Yeah, um, but uh, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, I, I've ne nobody's ever seen it. I've actually got it on on, on film. <laughs> when I yeah. fell off the rocks, and yeah, and I was bleeding quite heavily as well. Cut cut my leg quite badly. Yeah. <laughs> but that was yeah. So that happened on on the battlefield. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else because I, I, again, funnily enough, I, I, me and Derek did a, a we've never brought it out. Would you believe a bit uh, a film called Battlefield Ghosts. All right, okay. yeah. And we did the Battle of Sedgemoor. We spent three days down in Somerset uh, yeah. recording. I've got the whole thing on film and we never brought it out. Um, it was incredible. It was bloody good, honestly. Yeah. Um, never done it. I will. I'll have to speak to Gwen about it sometime uh, and see if we can uh, bring it out because the world would love to see it. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe we never got around to it. To, to, to doing it you know we've got all the, yeah. all the film there just sitting there on film um hours and hours of, of footage of me and Derek um on this battlefield and you know what he was sensing and picking up yeah it was quite something yeah. one day one day yeah, so, yeah, battlefield ghosts are so yeah. underestimated in my opinion because they have all the ingredients of a haunting mm -hmm. they do suicide murder uh soldiers blown to pieces um energy recordings on the battlefield depending on where it was like the rocks or or the, the clay that holds a recording um because you see gettysburg is, is probably probably the most haunted battlefield on the planet wow. um uh, there was an awful lot of went on there an awful lot of death and destruction and energy that was um expelled during the battle and all that energy uh, can be recorded. And, of course, what I found out afterwards is that the whole of the Gettysburg battlefield is on a red sandstone plateau. All right. And it's red sandstone that, that is is most capable of holding a recording. All because, right. A, it's made, it's made from silica, yeah. uh, which is where, you, cause where your silicon chips come from which hold a recording and the red of the sandstone, the more iron oxide there is in it, which is, which is magnetic, which, you know, really g gives the same impression as a magnetic cassette. Wow. Which holds a recording. Yeah. And that's why so many sounds and sights have been seen uh, on the battlefield of Gettysburg. Yeah. Huge believer in that. I think, I think 60% of ghosts are recordings. Yeah. The other 40% yeah, I... are, are, 
and intelligence, mm -hmm. spirits and souls of dead people. Yeah, I believe that because you know when these people say they see uh, ghosts walking through walls, yeah. Or you, know, you might only see half of a body. Like, because yeah, I yeah. know on your podcast, you did mention about the place in York, the young Romans. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And obviously, in the world. a lot lower. Do you want to tell that story for us? Oh, you know? God. I mean, incredible. Harry Martindale, God bless him, he's dead as well now. 18 uh, year old heating engineer, yeah. um, alone in the cellar of Treasure's house, drilling a hole, builders, sea ghosts, you know, drilling yeah. a hole through the ceiling when 20 Roman soldiers. 20 Roman soldiers, two by march through the wall towards him. And he, he, he fell off the ladder uh, and lying on the floor, looking at these Roman soldiers, thinking, Oh my god, the Romans, what are they going to do <laughs> to me? And I mean, again, they didn't do anything, they just marched past him. Oh, but yeah, but they were legless. So was Harry later after what he'd seen. <laughs> I'll tell you, um, and they marched through the other wall and disappeared. Yeah, he, he 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 left Treasurer's house, never went back, lost his tools, and called in at the doctor's on the way home. And the doctor put him on the sick for a fortnight with stress wow. after what he'd seen. Yeah, he then went down the pub with his mate, started talking about it, and everyone ridiculed. This is 1953, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone ridiculed Harry, obviously, for this. And and so his mum had a, a, a little word with him. He said, Harry, stop, stop telling that stupid ghost story, will you? We, we, we'll be the laugh, laughing stock of York. So he buttoned it. He shut up. Mm. He went on to be. He went on to become a York City policeman for thirty yeah. years. Credible guy, obviously. And in the late seventies, they did a because you see everyone. He, he drew pictures of what he'd seen. His yeah. Roman soldiers without legs, and 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 everyone said, "No, no, 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 no. They never. No Roman soldiers. They're not Roman soldiers. They don't look like Roman soldiers. You've got it wrong. You know." Mm. Um, and, um, and this is the way the history bit comes. You see, and and anyway. In, in the late 70s, they did an archaeological dig underneath the treasurer's house. Yeah. And 18 inches below the cellar floor, they found the Via Decumana, which is the Roman road leading wow. into it, leading into Eber Arkham, which was yeah. Roman York. And it was literally underneath the floor of treasurer's house, but 18 inches lower. Yeah. And so basically he saw his Roman soldiers with their sandaled feet firmly placed on the granite Roman road, 18 inches yeah. below. And the new cellar floor that had grown up over the years cut them off at the knee, made them look legless, little yeah. four foot Roman soldiers. <laughs> um, anyway, they then started to go into it big. And as again, you know, in the 50s, I mean, one well, long after the war, let's be honest with you, people were not really uh, researching like they have done since. And they went back to Harry again. And actually, he went around the world. He went and did a world tour. The chief constable of York gave him time off yeah. to go off around the world talk, talking about his, his Roman soldiers. Yeah. And they they, re -look, they looked at his pictures again and realised that they were soldiers from about 350 AD when, when Rome was being sacked and the Roman legions were brought back to Rome and all that they left here in York especially were Spanish auxiliaries which were spanish soldiers spanish people captured by the romans and yeah. put into the spanish army into the roman army right. and used as cannon for they were actually they or put them at the front of the army so they got killed first if you know so oh. all that was left was spanish auxiliaries and <coughs> the drawings harry had done were were identical to what a roman auxiliary soldier would have looked like they didn't right. have square shield they had round shields yeah. they didn't have Armor, they had chain mail. Honestly, absolutely spot on as what Harry oh, had drawn. Um, and just, just beyond anything. It was it's, it, what a story. Um, and of course, to, be, the, to, to finish the story beautifully, I think, was because I was doing a DVD, uh, Ghosts of York, mm -hmm. and I couldn't do that without having Harry Martindale on it. Yeah, of course. So I rang him, had a chat with him, and he, he stopped me. He said, Richard, Mr. Felix, I'm, I'm very sorry. He says, but. Uh, I don't talk about it anymore. I, I, I had a very serious heart attack. I came out of a, I was doing a talk, he used to do ghost walks around the hall. Yeah. Um, and um, he said, I came out of a, 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 I'd done a lecture, talk on ghosts, and I had a massive heart attack. And and um, I, I'm not not at all well now, you know, and I've had triple heart bypass surgery and what have you. And um, so I'm afraid I don't talk about it. I said, well, that's, that's fine. I said, all I can say, Mr. Martin, Martin, is thank you. It's been an absolute privilege to talk to you. Um, can I just tell you, you're my hero. I, yeah. I, whenever I do an event, I always tell your ghost story. 
because in my opinion, your ghost story is probably the best ghost story in the world. And I just, all I'd done was asked him if he'd come and do an interview, you know, and then the yeah. phone went quiet. And then this voice said, go on, then I'll do it for you. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. And he met me in the cellar of Treasurer's House. And we did the most incredible interview with him, standing on the spot, showing me the bit of wall and the Roman yeah. road where, um, where, where, where he saw him. Amazing. What a story. It really was. Um, and, um, at the end of the interview, I, all I said to him, because I said, you know, you, you should write a book. You really should write a book on this. He said, well, it's the only thing that ever happened. Hmm. I've never seen anything since. Or anything. I said, no, but you just your story and what happened and the fact that you went around the world doing yeah. the talk, you know, and your police, all everything, and you go, so you should do it, you know. And I just said, Harry, can I just ask you the last question? Do you believe in ghosts? And he said, only the ones I've seen. And I thought, wow, yeah, yeah. I mean, incredible. And he died about four years ago, oh. and I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I missed going to his funeral, mm. which I'm so sorry about. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, incredible, incredible um, guy. Anyway, when I did this book, this new book, I'm not – this isn't a plug, by the way. I was uh, about to question that. that was my next question about your no, new right. book. Menace. Yeah, well, I've done two. I've, done, I've re just run What is a Ghost? But yeah, basically, cool. this one, and I believe that actually is, is backwards on your is on the screen. Is it? No, no, that's right where I can see, fan. You can see. All oh, right. Yeah, and of course, see, down here cool. it says contains probably the best ghost story in the world, which oh. of course is uh, Harry's story. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and you know, just to me, this book is dedicated to the late Mr. Harry Martindale, the man who told the best ghost story in the world. And this is all about. This is purely people's ghost stories yeah the public not not edgar Allan poe not not lord halifax's ghost stories not not anybody else i can't think of that's written a book it, yeah. it's you the public that and, and their stories and it's incredible that's the proof that everybody needs to Definitely. prove that ghosts exist yeah because there's so many stories in there i like to call them accounts rather than stories by the way yeah. there's so many accounts in there of people that have never met each other but they're so similar you won't believe it yeah oh. it's amazing so I've done, i did that yeah that's gone well and then the other one of course i've done is um uh, i've rewritten what is a ghost yeah because i did it in 19 oh hang on a minute God, I've learned so much more in the last 12 years. 12 years ago, I wrote it, and I've yeah. completely redone it. And um, and that's, again, you know, quite something. And all available on richardfelix.co.uk, <laughs> along you with all the make... DVDs, of course. Yeah, of course. What was it, What um, especially the, the latest book, you know, What is a Ghost? What was it, what influenced you or made you want to re-release this book and update it? Oh, because I'd learned so much more in the last 12 years. Because so much yeah. more, you know, I'd, I'd learned so much more about the stone tape theory and, and yeah. uh, what it really is and how it works. Because I've been, you know, researching and talking to scientists and all sorts mm. of people about it. And I, I've just learned so much more um, yeah. that I thought this has to be rewritten because mm -hmm. uh, there's so much more in it now. And of course, I mean, I started the whole thing uh, when I did it because you know, it's called What is a Ghost? So I yeah. thought the best thing I can do at the beginning is to try and explain what the word means, ghost. Yeah. G-H-O-S-T, that everybody's fascinated by. Yeah. And, and so that's the, the explanation of the word. And all it means is to be frightened of. Yeah. It's a proto-Indo-European world, well over 4,000 years old, called goist, pronounced goist, G-H-O-I-D-Z. And mm -hmm. it means to be frightened of. Right. And, and from that word came uh, the Middle English word, ghost, G-O-S-T, the mm. Old English word, ghast, G-H-A-S-T, the, the Saxon geist. Uh, and they all come from the same word, meaning to be frightened of. Yeah? yeah. But when William Caxton came over to this country in the 1400s with his printing press mm. and for the first time put took all our words and put them in print, yeah. he took the Middle English word, ghost, G-O-S-T, but he spelt it with a silent H because he was from Holland, and that's the Flemish way of spelling. So yeah. we, we got our ghost. But if you go back to Old English, gust, 
G H A S T. Have you ever been aghast at something? Mm. Um, Have you ever seen something ghastly? Yeah. Frightening. So that's all it means. I want to change it from ghost to energy. Yeah. Because ghost means to be frightened of, mm -hmm. which is from when we started talking at the beginning. You know, don't fear what you don't understand, but we do. Yeah. So that's all a ghost is. Well, somewhere. <laughs> Although if you went to the Oxford English Dictionary, it says the disembodied spirit or soul of a dead person. True. I agree with that as well. But a ghost is the word that means to be frightened of. Yeah. Wow. So my final question for you, Richard, again, yes, thank, you. thank you very much for taking your time. It's a out pleasure. Your pleasure. Honestly, I really, really do appreciate it. What is next for Richard Felix? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I, I'm, oh dear. It's very nice to be able to get back to ghost walks and tours. Yeah. Uh, I must be honest, I am getting quite busy with people wanting to do uh, night vigils at Derby Jail. Because mm. uh, because you get two jails, not one. I've got two. They're only eight minutes apart. Walk. Yeah. And we, we, you get to, to do both of them during the night, which is in, incredible. I'm very pleased that they're, they're coming back. And, you know, I'm starting again on yeah. May the 17th when we can do stuff again. Um, I'm working on uh, Ghosts of Greater Manchester at the moment, uh, a book on mm -hmm. Greater Manchester, because that that's some belting stories on there, especially yeah. because a lot of what we do, of course, you know, uh, antics, but most haunted, of course, they, they come from there. So a lot of the yeah. shows we did... We're around Greater Manchester. I'm working on that at the moment. Um, I, I'm trying to get to TV to to, to uh, let me do a, a, a series called The Felix Files <laughs> with a big telling the, all of the different aspects of ghosts. Yeah, the stone tape theory, ghosts in the church, screaming skulls, banshees, harbingers of death. I mean, there's so many aspects to it. Yeah. But, and then the other one I want to do, of course, is is battlefield ghosts uh, yeah. as well. But I may have to just, we may have to set our own channel up mm -hmm. uh, and do it ourselves. Because TV, if it's not frightening, they won't want to know it. And then <laughs> the other thing I'm doing, because I've done a few up to now, is um, uh, doing, I'll probably do one a year, a, a, a haunted, t a, a bus, a ghost bus tour, <laughs> oh, ghost, ghost bus. A, a, a tour around England, a haunted England, yeah. haunted Wales, haunted wow. Scotland, yeah. haunted Ireland. You know, a week's tour, you know, staying yeah. in haunted hotels and visiting the most haunted places in Great Britain and yeah. Ireland. Um, that's another thing I'm working on at the moment. That, nothing like that's going to happen until 2022, though. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one, the last one is, um, oh, dear. Um, we, we're, we're thinking of opening up the house here and doing, because I did this ridiculous uh, couples come dine with me. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 it had get more response from that than than, than a lot. <laughs> and we're we're thinking of actually doing a, a, a oh I do a thing yeah I, I do an event called uh, dining with the dead. All right, which is okay. a dinner, dinner yeah. with ghost stories. Oh wow! Um, and we don't, but we're planning on doing it at, here at home. Uh, my wife actually reproducing the meal that we did on yeah. come dine with me, and doing a haunted haunted evening here. You know, with a oh, with a five course meal, and a tour to the to the tank room <laughs> well, <laughs> so uh, i've got a lot of zombies like i should be retired i should have re been retired years ago but uh nah, still at it too Seems much like, to do yeah so much respect to you you know keep going out there and keep you know getting the proof for people and like you say you well, take... that's what it's about mm. that's what it's about proof Definitely. and there is proof that book i'm not plugging it but that book is the proof that ghosts exist because there are so many stories accounts in there from people ordinary down-to-earth credible people yeah that that have experienced things it got to be true it's got Definitely. to be true yeah yeah it's incredible it's it's it's, it's good stuff it's good stuff no, honestly, richard just thank you so much for taking your time i really really do appreciate it um, my uh, pleasure enjoyed yeah. it enjoyed it immensely. <laughs>